Uh, I could pull a better podcast out of my head. Hey, kids, welcome to the Tempest Universe. China. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. It's China to me, China. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside. China! This is an attempt at universe, man. Hold on to your ass, you're in for a hell of a ride. I know you got a case of the Mondays, because I do. What in the hell is going on? This is the Tempest Universe, as you've heard already like 15 times. <sighs> you know, it all started last week. We had a uh, confirmed COVID case in the Moonraker household. Then we had the thunderstorms, lost air conditioning, power went out twice. Miraculously, the air conditioning came back by itself. Nobody knows why. But it's been, um, as they say, in the local vernacular, it's balls to the wall. There, There is like, like I literally came in hauling ass into Monday just to, you know, be be prepped. Like I'm like a Rambo. Monday drew first blood. It wasn't me. That's what happened. I hope you guys had a better Monday than I did. Or the weekend. It was Mother's Day weekend. You know, the Mother's Day part was pretty nice, to be honest. But the hot as hell, triple digit, I mean, the feels like was between 100 and 406 over the weekend. The thunderstorms were not playing either. As you'll see in one of our stories that uh, ended up in our um, our catch for today. We got four. I, initially, I thought we had five, but, uh, you know, counting is for people who get education, I guess. I, I counted wrong by one. It's a weird situation. By the way, if you haven't listened to our buddy Patrick Cutler and Don Bromley regarding that UFO pic that it's turning into a documentary, which didn't start like a documentary, but now it is, you got to listen to it. That was the last episode that was uploaded. You can go to YouTube and actually see these guys as they uh, explain what went down. It's a it's an interesting story, and the fact that these guys just come together, just like that, they just end up coming together. You know, Don has a crazy picture on his trail cam, you know, because he's a hunter. He's a hunter, and um, and Patrick just working on the film, which initially was the opposite around it was it was not going to be a documentary. Instead, he was going to employ true stories about the Red Gate area into his uh, fictional film, and then all of a sudden uh, it, it took a, uh, a 180 turn. And now it's more about the real stories, the things that really went down in Red Gate, which you're more than welcome to listen to uh, Patrick tell the stories and also uh, Don just uh, kind of wet your whistle as to what they were talking about. They, they, they were pretty cool. They were down to earth. You can tell that we're trying to pull any funny business. Now, if you look at the picture of the bulbous-headed naked alien, you go to question yourself as to what exactly was it that he took a picture of. Was it some drunkard? Was it someone that was just uh, on crystal meth and lost their way and were walking for hours on end, probably never found again? We don't know. Nobody really knows. But we have is a weird ass weird ass picture. I kind of I kind of explain uh, to uh, actually I, I didn't tell them this, but I kept on putting filters on it, and this the more filters you put on that on that photo, the more alien it gets. Sadly enough, but you got to be there if you wanted to see it. That's where you needed to be. Other than that, um, you know, with this uh, new case of the Wuhan flu in the household, I mean, geez, I don't know what to do. Hopefully, I uh, you know I can make it to Vegas. And the Area 51 trip, because honestly, let's, 
if I get if I get you today, then I'm good. You know, I'll get over it in, in about five days. I'm still I'm still good to go. Now I don't I don't know how Wuhan flu is going to fare, you know, within the lungs, because I'm trying to take video of the desert on the way to Area 51. I don't know how that's going to work. If it if it goes down that way, I'm not really sure, but we'll see. I'll have to keep Da Nam posted on this. Uh, and I'm sure Norm doesn't care if he catches the Wuhan flu. You know, he's a strong kind of guy. He can withstand a little Wuhan. Me, on the other hand, nah, not too much. I want to say what's up to the guys who are in the live chat. We got Danam, as I was saying. I uh, gave it Dre. Uh, we don't have any green man. Oh, show. Sure. Hey, hoy, there he is. Just as I was saying it. We got four articles to chat about today. And um, I don't know. I don't know where this uh, ufology thing is going, but there was a fascinating picture that was released recently. We, we'll talk about that. It's actually the logo for this particular episode. We we got uh, Lou Elizondo back in the news. God damn it, Lou. And uh, the USS Reagan UFO incident there to talk about. And then the Texas guy. At first I thought it was Dre, but because he was missing for a little bit over the weekend. But it wasn't Dre, it was uh, some guy at the meatpacking factory. We used to have a joke in New York that uh, we offer people jobs in the back, or jobs taking meat in the back. But um, sadly enough, not too many people signed up for that job, so it is what it is. Tweets their own. The last thing is, I have this, uh, I have this, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it, because... I've been watching, you know, a lot of like YouTube shorts and stuff like that. And I've been watching this stuff, you know, trying to keep up with Ukraine and uh, Putin Putin and, and what he, was going on there. It seems like the tide is being turned, but that's not what I want to talk about at the moment. You know, that's some serious shit going on over there. But what I talk, what I want to talk about is the fact that all these shorts on Biden, <laughs> I don't understand what the hell is going on. It seems like he's getting worse and worse. As time goes on, he, he's, I don't know, he, he says all these crazy things and he, he like he loses, he loses consciousness of where he's at. He's not conscious or he's not aware of it anymore. Like he really has some signs of dementia, I guess. But every time I see stories of Biden, I, I think about the one song I dedicated to him right from the word go. Here's how I picture him getting up, uh, dementia and all. Getting up every morning because he relives winning the election every damn time. Can I just be honest? Like this. Get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, look at eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Start my day. Wake up, get up, get up, get up stretch my legs. Eat some eat some breakfast. breakfast. Milk and eggs Brush my teeth up Wash my face Throw my clothes on Start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day Okay, I know that today will be a good day A, B, C, one, two, three Drink some water, brush my teeth, get out of bed and I stretch. Bed in my hair is a mess. Look through my clothes for a fit. Anything I do is drip. Feel like a kid when I'm tick tock and I still keep it real as it is. I show my age, I don't switch often. I'm just as a dad as it gets. Try taking naps with my kids, talking. I'm guessing this life how it is. And I can't wait for the weekend. Keep jammies on like I'm a kid. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs Brush my teeth up, wash my face Throw my clothes on, start my day Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows Okay, I know that today will be a good day Okay I know that today will be a good day Feel good, feel great Can't complain Look out my window See birds and planes Sun's out, some clouds It might rain 
siblings on my nerves, on my nerves again. Summertime, go for a swim. Wintertime, go grab a sled. Spring, I might need an umbrella. Fall back in school with my friends. Attitude change like the weather. My mom tell me it never ends. Like clocks, we evolve in a circle. Every 12 months, we do it again. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on, start my day. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. What are we doing? What's going on right now? If you were in Texas over the weekend, especially uh, the San Antonio area, I don't know about anywhere else. I don't even care. All I know is that down here, and I don't know is that I don't have like houses behind me. You know, I've got to the left, to the right, up in the front, but uh, to, to the back, there's no exactly any houses. At least not for half a mile or so. But the sound of the lightning this weekend was unbelievable. It, it was so nuts that it, it knocked out the damn air conditioning. Then the power twice, as I repeat myself on this podcast. This guy out of Texas, who is a, a he worked at a, a meat plant, basically. He's uh, packing meat in the back. That's what he does, literally. His name is Connor. He's 23. This young guy who uh, usually, apparently, does not pay attention to things like lightning storms. But today, he had a break. He decides to step outside during the madness of the lightning storms and take a video. That's how bad it was. Like, literally, this dude stopped. He stopped taking the meat in the back, and he said, hey, I need to go, I need to go outside take a break and take some video of this madness. In this video, he says what he caught was not only an epic lightning storm, but he caught a UFO hurtling down to the ground. When will these UFOs learn? When, what is it with them? Apparently, this thing was either a meteor out of nowhere, heading down, undetected by NASA or anybody else. Then decides to come down in full view of Connor, and he caught it. If you go to the article in the description, you'll see this image of this. Uh, it looks like a streak of light just heading down. It, do- it doesn't look like lightning. And uh, apparently the video is posted somewhere. I, I couldn't find the link into the, the the actual article itself, but I'm sure if you, you if you check for Connor Texas meet in the back, you'll find him. You will find him. He says, uh, according to Connor, I can't say that I've encountered anything like this before. Shit, you're wet behind the ears, Connor. You're only 23. Come on. I'm sure you didn't. He says I've never really recorded the skies or anything, and. That day of the storm, I really felt the need to record. It's funny how a lot of people who have these experiences, right? Like uh, UFOs, alien abductions, uh, probing and stuff like that. The day that you usually get this, this inkling or this yearning to do something they'd never do. Like walk two, three miles in the middle of the dark on a, a barely lit highway and, and, and then come face to face. With a UFO. Here's Tyler. I mean, not Tyler. Here's Connor. You know, he comes out. Decides, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to pull out my video because I need to recall this with somebody. Okay, now he's now he's all over the place. Now people want to see his video. He says he's open to any kind of suggestion as to what it might be or what it was. He says the best case scenario, it's a meteor because I've never seen one. 
I mean, this guy is a shelter. He's got a sheltered life. I don't even think he has internet. Literally, all he sees is meat all day. But he's never seen one. He's never seen a meteor, so he's gonna, he can't rule that out, for fuck's sake. I mean, for all we know, some fucking Cessna got shot down, and he's like, is that a meteor? I don't know. I can't, uh, I'm not making fun of him, I'm just saying. I mean, the guy said it himself. He has no, he has no clue. Um, he said lots of people um, thought that Connor had filmed a, a regular meteor, and others kind of questioned why something would move so quickly. Like you would think a meteor would start slowing down a little bit, right? Because it's hitting the atmosphere. It's getting it's getting pummeled by rain and lightning. So there's still some questions. Thanks, bugs. And again, so folks are uh, in a big debate, right? You got, you got the UFO side, you got the it's nothing side. It could just be a meteor that no one even knew was uh, headed this way. Either way, this ended up on Connor's uh, cell phone along with some other pics. Others went as far as saying that all he caught was a damn bug. There's a lot of bugs in Texas, let me tell you. Not just a four-legged kind, but there's some insects out there. Because I encountered many of them this weekend. So who knows? Was it a drop of rain that was reflecting the light as maybe uh, the lightning was uh, striking? There's there's so many things that could have happened, but, you know, we don't want to steal his thunder, O'Connor. 23 from the meatpacking plant working in the back. We understand. But the good thing is he had the presence of mind or he was compelled to go take this picture. And if you feel something like that, if you feel like you need to go step outside, just go outside and look to the sky, you probably should do it. There is a reason. There is some kind of a, a sixth sense that's telling you you're about to see some shit. Don't miss it. There are so many people in the topic of UFOs historically who get that feeling, you know, they get that uh, a little tingle down in the nads that say something's about to go down, kind of like Spider-Man. Something's about to go down, and I need to go capture this moment. So, Connor, kudos to you for doing this. We appreciate you at least sharing the picture. You know, I'm sure it's going to make you <laughs> some kind of money somewhere along the way. Who freaking knows? You know, this whole UFO reporting thing is just getting out of hand. But um, Connor might write a book in about a year about this one incident. Now, he'll probably see UFOs all the time now just because of this. Just be honest. Check out the link in the description. And if you know Connor, let me know. We can bring him on here and really get into why he was taking meatpacking situations in Texas.
This next one kind of gives um, the idea. Number one, that we, we've known about UFOs for decades now. Probably way longer than that. That's true. Hundreds of years, thousands of years. How were you? If you was an Egyptian, you probably saw a UFO. If you were like living by the Mayan temple, you probably saw a UFO. If you were in New Mexico in the 40s, you saw a shitload of UFOs and some dummies being dropped from the sky. This particular article is about one UFO picture, a photo from the 1970s, 1971. This was taken out in Costa Rica and it was taken by an individual who was working for the Costa Rican government. It is a photo, number one, that was not taken by uh, digital means. This is a real film, a real picture, something that had to be developed. And the photo was taken by an individual by the name of Sergio. And it sat, the negative of this photo sat in some office until the 1980s uh, before somebody decided to, you know, take a look at it. And they saw something crazy. A damn a flying saucer. So what, uh, what's the issue here? Well, the guy was, you know, he was just flying. He was doing... A, um, he was photographing for a project, for a hydroelectric project uh, that was going to be, uh, you know, planned for the rainforest. So you literally, he's in a plane, he's flying over the rainforest, taking these pictures down in Costa Rica. It's, uh, oh, Sergio, back in 1971. And this saucer appeared. It was taken from 10,000 feet. And below him, and the plane he was in, there's a metallic disc flying over the land. Decades later, in the 80s, you know, somebody was studying the negatives and, oh, oh, shit, what the hell is this? What the hell was Sergio doing? Well, there you go. Uh, the picture is time-stamped at 8.25 in the morning, and it has that disc in it. Over the years, apparently the object has been estimated to be between 120 and 220 feet in diameter. How do you explain this? How do you, you know, today as a modern human being, explain to someone like Sergio, who was probably flying over, you know, a bunch of tribes they've never seen an airplane before. Like, how would you explain to them that there was a UFO flying over their camp. How do you explain to folks that uh, today now have Pornhub, thanks to Elon Musk, down in the rainforest, that their ancestors in the 70s used to be um, visited by flying saucers, metallic discs? This is crazy. Now, what do we know about Sergio? Not a damn thing. Maybe Sergio back then was a UFO uh, nutty. And he, he somehow dropped a disc out of a plane that's about 220 feet wide in order to fake this picture. You gotta look at the picture. It is the image right now for the episode. But uh, better yet, go to the article because at least you can see uh, the picture a bit, a bit uh, larger. And the funny thing is that the folks that, that have been taking, you know, uh, copies, digital copies of these pictures say that the photo itself is way sharper than any of the digital photos that are being shared because of this article. How strange is that? In addition to that, they've done a amazing amount of work in trying to prove whether or not this was a fake. Whether or not someone was messing around with this uh, negative. And again, it's a negative. It was a real picture. It's not digital. No one was going around trying to Photoshop it and, and put this uh, thing in there. And they've been able to prove it by using a bunch of uh, high-resolution imaging techniques to try to figure out whether or not this could be debunked. One of the things they did was use a drum scanner in order to study the transparency and reflexive services uh, at really high resolution. 
nothing. To this day, they cannot figure out whether, uh, well, they, they can't figure out if this was faked. They, just, they can't prove it. It comes out as a true, real, original picture taken by Sergio in 1971. Now, if this is the real deal, what the hell are we doing? If we had a picture of a real live UFO over the rainforest down in Costa Rica, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on in Costa Rica to chat UFOs? And what opportunists these greys are, right? But it's nuts. What a great picture it is. You've got to go to the article and really check it out. Take a good look at it. I would imagine that the reason it's in one frame is because I'm sure the thing was hauling ass over the rainforest. The question is, did Sergio or the pilot actually see it? That would be something to really look into as far as who else at the time. But again, you know, 1971 over the rainforest... I guarantee you, no one was reporting UFOs. I'm sure that many of the uh, folks that traversed or lived anywhere near the rainforest might even be familiar with scenes like this. This saucer may not be anything new to them. So various UFO researchers have uh, attempted to debunk the picture They've analyzed it. They've analyzed the negatives. And to this day, no one can say that it was fabricated or that it is a double exposure or that Sergio was some kind of a nutbag trying to pull a hoax on the world in the 70s. It's just amazing how sometimes the... the the least likely place where you think you would find evidence of a UFO that's untampered with, there it is. Costa Rica. Sergio. It's amazing, really. But yet we struggle today with uh, the story of of the UFO. Where it comes from. Like, I'm not really sure if China or Russia had interest in uh, Costa Rica back in the 70s. I mean, because according to folks in government, they're the ones who are the more likely candidates for producing UFOs. And again, if if you look at what's happening today in current events, that shit cannot be, cannot be Russia. I'm telling you, we can just hang that up. Check out the link and check this out.
Don't fucking scream at me. Where's you the dumb money? Fuck you. Look at you. With your fucking 48% body fat. You know, as of uh, maybe the last year or so, we've been, we've been hearing about all these other UFO incidents that are coming out of the woodwork when it comes to military personnel. Uh, this one in particular happened with the USS Ronald Reagan back in 2004, and uh, some mysterious object appeared over the warship. No explanation for what they saw. No one ever came back to all of these uh, military men and women. Getting said to them, hey, <laughs> there was nothing, man. A little test piloting we're doing. Like, we know, we, we got this UFO thing. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, I mean, it's a drone. And we just wanted to see how you guys reacted to it. Instead, what these guys are saying, like uh, Petty Officer and Quartermaster Carol Olesyke. I butchered your name, Carol. It's okay. He said, I'm pretty sure it was there. Yeah, I, I said Carol. It's Carol with a K. He said, I'm pretty sure it was it was there. And they were like, I don't know what it is. I don't care. <laughs> Isn't that jacked up? Like you literally are on a warship. There is an unidentified flying object or unidentified aerial phenomena, uh, current times. That's what they call it. And you go up to your CO and you say, hey, hey, buddy. You know, salute them, all that kind of shit. Say, oh, we got a problem because um, there's a thing over there. And it's like following us. And um, what, what, what do we do? You know, he doesn't say turn the damn guns on him. He doesn't, you know. He doesn't say, you know, send up a bird and let's check it out. Let's get close to it. Like they do in the movies. Nope. He's like, just ignore it. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, son. Get back to your, <laughs> get that, get back to your duty station. This is apparently is what happened to all these folks that were on the USS Ronald Reagan. And that's what they were being told. Just freaking ignore it. What are you talking about? We don't give a damn. One of them went on to say, don't even bother me about this shit. So this thing is there and entirely on my watch. And because the officers are ignoring it, I'm forced to ignore it as well. That's what Carol said. This is what happens. Now, you as a uh, commanding officer uh, on this particular vessel, why would you ignore a UFO? I don't get it. According to Carol, you know, unless one of them sets a problem, says that this thing is an issue or a problem or something that needs to be dealt with, it's not a problem. You just got to keep on going and forget about it. So until one of them tells you this UFO is a problem, you just need to button your lip and just keep it moving. Crazy. Another individual surfing on the USS Ronald Reagan, Seaman Derek Smith, said, Hey, in talking to the debrief, I'm sitting here looking at this thing. I couldn't tell what it was. There was a shape. It was like oval. It didn't look solid, but it had a shape to it. But what do you do with it? Where do you go? The damn thing is there. Everybody's seeing it. But the folks who are in command of the vessel are saying, shut the fuck up and go back to what you were doing. There, There's something wrong here. Were they already used to this happening? Were they already debriefed, as they say, ahead of time? That there was going to be some kind of a test or that they could possibly come across an unidentified flying object because other vessels were experiencing it in the same area. It's crazy. There was another witness who didn't want to give their name and said, after I called it in, they were like, let us know what happens. <laughs> let it, and call us when it's a cliffhanger. But this person says the damn thing just stayed with us. I don't remember how long it stayed with the ship, but it stayed with the ship 
for a while. It just followed us. And we were like, well, what's our positioning with, with the sun? I was like, that's not the sun. Literally, they were thinking maybe what you're looking at is the sun. The way to describe this UFO as being the shape that it was, um, you, you'd be pretty hot as far as it being the sun because it's pretty damn close to the vessel. It is the weirdest thing to hear these explanations. But again, we've known historically, and I'm sure back in 2004, it was the same way. You don't write UFO or, you know, weird-shaped object hanging around our vessel following us because your career would be in question. You'd come out as a quack. They'd send you, <laughs> they'd send you back somewhere, stick you behind a desk, or send you in for a, a psyche eval. Give you a piss test. This is what these guys are having to experience on the uh, USS Ronald Reagan. According to the article, there was a significant lack of response from the officers. In fact, the orders that they gave these individuals were not even logged as an event which was apparently very puzzling that none of these concerns that were raised, none of the stuff that was being called in was even being tracked. Career advancement and being labeled a quack or UFO nutty, as I like to say, it's a real thing, or at least it was, and it might still be. Some people might come out of the woodwork now, maybe a little bit more than before, but... It's a problem. It was a problem. It's still a problem. Here you have military... Thanks, Bugs. Men and women who are in the face of a UFO following them. I I would be scared shitless. What if this thing was able to sink the ship that you're on? That should should concern someone, right? You're, You're literally just floating around on water on several hundred tons of steel. And this thing is there like it gives zero fucks about what you're doing, what you have, what kind of weapons are aboard. It it doesn't give a damn. You and I, as uh, maybe coming into inheritance of a chopper, you for damn sure would not fly that close to a vessel. If you had a drone that you decided to go buy, some kind of prosumer drone, you know, them big ones, if you want that shit back, you would not fly and follow a Navy vessel because you would not get it back. It'd be history. So would your chopper and your dumbass body in it. So what happened with this UFO? Why was it ignored? Why did these guys... Shooken up by it. Because apparently even one of them said, I couldn't believe the damn thing was just, was just there. Like it was watching us. It's nuts. I know it. You know it. And we're not getting any closer. Anyone that says that we are fully in disclosure is a rubber dicker. You're lying to yourself or you're lying to everybody else. This... This is not disclosure, not from a government agency. Hell, the government, the folks that were running the vessel, tried their best to stifle this and not let anyone know that it even happened. This is what your sign of disclosure looks like. And the Unintelligent Committee, and whatever damn office we got we got put together in the United States by, by Congress and uh, signed bills and Gillibrand and all these other people. It's bullshit. Straight up bullshit. You guys know it. It'll take maybe a few decades before any of them really come clean about what happened. But until then, we got great stories like this. They shouldn't be ignored, really. Like, we should stop going into the uh, legacy incidents like Roswell and pay attention to these guys. They saw it. They can put it together for us. Like someone back in Roswell, 
they didn't have the technology to recreate what they saw. We can do that now. We can get all these guys together and get some kind of a computer geek to use their talent in digital arts to give us a visual of what they saw. It would be fantastic. There's more in the article if you want to check it out. We're going into our last article with Lou Elizondo, of course. I mean, psh, why not? <laughs> I think the, the interviews that are happening with Louis Lozondo are, are fascinating, right? Because the guy knows so much. And he tries so so hard not to let the uh, the cat, the proverbial alien out of the bag, that sometimes people are starting to figure out the right questions to ask. And, you know, little tidbits come out. In a former, uh, what is this? Oh, here it goes. I'm a former Pentagon chief, and I know... U.S. investigated UFO abductions of military staff. They must reveal the truth. Could you imagine? All those guys that were on the USS Reagan, if, uh, if they had lost time. What if they did? What if they were missing a couple hours of time? And that's why there was no log recordings. That's why the CEOs just ignored them. Because they were like, what the hell do we tell them? You know, we've lost about five hours of time. On this damn um, uh, big big steel boat, and and this damn UFO has taken advantage of us. According to Lou, 
He says there's shit in our skies we do not understand. Okay, we need to fess up with what's happening. When the guy that ran the advanced aerospace threat identification program, you have to kind of sit up and listen just a little bit, right? Now, sometimes I do. I'm a bit cynical, too. Sometimes I'm like, uh, you know, Luz is trying to sell a damn book, right? Because uh, there was this uh, story uh, about a year ago, maybe a little more, that he was getting a book together he was going to publish. Maybe he's just trying to give us little little, little crumbs so that we can be enticed and hooked into what the hell he's going to reveal in the book. Maybe that's what it is. But he, he was in an interview with a journalist, Baptiste Friscourt. And you know, Baptiste said, hey, uh, uh, I would imagine Baptiste is French. Oh, did you investigate uh, military personnel suffering from abductions? You know, and I, and you, I, you know, Lou, Lou has like no facial reaction. Lou's just sitting there with a thick neck, and he's just staring Baptiste in the face, like I'm going to shank you. And then Lou says, "Yes, and unfortunately, Baptiste, I can't go into more than that." At this time. Well, what the fuck is that? He didn't say that. He didn't say anything. He didn't say what that was. That was the answer he gave. So people in the military are being abducted by aliens. He hinted at it. I mean, he doesn't really fucking tell anybody that that's what happened. He just hinted at it. Yeah, I'm sure but Baptiste was like, Grr. you know, what do I ask now? Do I pressure him? Do I, do I bring it down? Do I bring down the hammer? On this dude here, he's got no neck. There's no way. There's no way. I mean, he's staring right at me. I, get, I, get, I feel my soul right now. It's about to leave my body by the way Lou, a man, is staring at me. That is just crazy. To think that if you're in the military, there is a good chance that you will be abducted. And think about it. You know, these guys go out on these ships... And they could go out for months, six months. Can you imagine all the shit that could go down when you're in the middle of the ocean, very far from home, very far from land, and these uh, UFOs can do what the hell they want, when they want? I would imagine that the stories are unbelievable. Unbelievable. But at the same time, these people in the past, they wouldn't say anything. It was hush hush. Don't say nothing. Keep it to yourself. You know? And then, you know, if you get abducted and you don't know what the other guy is doing or what the hell happened to them, you know, you might lose a few hours, but for damn sure you're not going to go around blabbing unless you just fucking lose it. And then they throw you in the brig somewhere. Then you got to wait for the psych ward. Back on land somewhere. Maybe they'll fly you out. I don't know. I don't know how that works. They'll throw you overboard in a dinghy and wait for somebody to pick you up. Not really sure how this goes down, but according to this, because it was not denied by Louis Lozando, it's a real deal. There was a follow-up question, right? And the question was, uh, whether or not the number of abductions have gone up. Lou's answer, uh, he already said, I'm not going to freaking, a- freaking answer the damn question, but he answered this one. He says that's hard to question to, uh, that's a hard question to answer because we don't know if actually it's increased or if more people are feeling comfortable to report and come forward. And so therein lies the problem. Lou goes on to say to the UK Sun, I'm not a UFO guy. I'm an investigator. My job was simple, to collect data and speak the truth. There's something in our skies. We don't know what it is and don't know how it works. We don't fully know what it can do. We don't know who is behind the wheel. We don't know its intentions. And there isn't a damn thing we can do about it. Thank you, Lou. 
good way to strike fear in the hearts of millions. Well, actually, uh, that last report that came up to the Unintelligent Committee, I believe that the rumor is that one of the uh, the folks on the committee said the same shit. <laughs> we can't do a damn thing about UFOs. Maybe that's what it is. We just need to fucking ignore it. Continue to have catamutilations. Continue to disappear off dark roads. Continue to, you know, just grin and bear it. Just get abducted, get probed, get your eggs taken. You know, whatever it takes. Just let it happen. By your oppressors, your alien oppressors. I just may believe nothing ever happened. I feel like this is where this is going to end up eventually. And you know, some of you might, uh, you UFO guys, as Lou says, the UFO guys might be upstarts, but we will we will quickly squash you because we need to forget UFOs. We need to forget all the stories we've heard. You know, Sergio down in Costa Rica, go to hell. We don't need any of this stuff. We're done. We are done. We can't get nowhere, and that's the way it's going to stay. I don't know what you're going to do with that. Uh, do what you will. This is what are we going to do? We're just people, God damn it. We're just people. And uh, blue-collar folks, you you just are never going to get any damn answers unless you get probed yourself. And in which case, no one's going to believe you anyway, so enjoy it while you're there. Take photos, do selfies, tell the alien guy to stop probing you. You want to take a selfie? Give him a hug, kiss him on the cheek. It's the only evidence you're going to have, and that's it. There's no one backing you right now. Everyone's being lied to. Even the unintelligent committee. That's the end of the episode for today. Hopefully I don't got COVID. The Wuhan flu should stay away. We'll see what happens next week. I mean, like I said, I don't think Nam is going to worry about uh, the Wuhan flu next week. But uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a, a rough trip nonetheless. But that's it, ciao. Catch you guys on Wednesday. Hopefully we got uh, better stories. We need, we need an update on good old Musk. Not a Twitter update. A SpaceX update. Let's keep it real. Time can never be your trusted friend or your sworn ally. No, it's the harshest mistress of all. And life is just a chain of moments spent, a thousand hellos and Maybe a love like ours can leave out its call I will keep you near until the world ends And you are safe with me I have the
Stop listening to others. 